Good to have Clay Henry with us from Hogs Illustrated, publisher, editor, uh, writer extraordinaire, fisherman extraordinaire, all around good guy. Hi, Clay. How are you? Yeah, you left out husband and father, but that's okay. Those things too. Those, but not to me. That you know, you're not. You, those are not things that I guess I. Okay. I know. I know you I well enough. enough just yet. There. I yeah, would have thrown in Cook in there too. Cook. Yeah. Pitmaster. Pitmaster. Yeah, Pitmaster. That's probably the better way to put it because I remember during the summer we talked. What was it? The like a grape. Uh, what kind of glaze did you put on oh, like your steak? Yeah, remember what we talked about during the summer. Yeah, it's a marinade with uh, Worcestershire and grape jelly. That's right, yeah. 45 minutes in a bag, mash it around. Best with, with ribeyes. Yep. It kind of gives it a little tang. Um, it's not for every time, but it's something a little different. It's a, it's a Paula Dean thing. Not surprising, right? Um, you know, that's a deep south thing. Um, I, I had some guys in from East Tennessee uh, and cooked for them Thursday night, and we had six big ribeyes from uh, mm. Richard's Meat Market. And it, I didn't do the uh, the grape jelly marinade, but I have. But I did fix uh, cherry cobbler with vanilla ice cream for him. Yeah. Oh, he is that's, a chef, man. A pit master and of, chef, all these things. That's the kind of finishing touch, and it will finish you off. That's a heavy finish. Is it, uh, would it be okay if I called you a certified bucket too, Clay? Um, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, I, I, and I, I maybe I'm making too much of it because uh, it's just fresh to me, and I just don't I don't like as student athletes on their way out that that try to set things on fire, and it just kind of felt like that is what happened with Desi Sills yesterday. Uh, not that he went to Auburn, but just you know he's putting a chip on his sho- on his own shoulder, and one that I'm not really sure if the, if the, if. Uh, <laughs> If there was a chip that really needed to be there, um, I, I'm I'm probably a little too upset about it, but it just uh, it just hit me the wrong way. Yeah, I mean, it's when you when you pick out a school that's you know that is uh, you know one of your division rivals, and I guess basketball they don't have divisions, but um, you know it it just. It was uh, a little uncomfortable when I saw that. It's like, oh, really? You didn't have to do that. Yeah. But I, you know, I don't know the dynamics of all that went down. You're, you know, you're not in the practices. You're not in the, you know, the locker room, so to speak. And how, you know, what the dynamics of all that have been. And there's been an awful lot of change. And what you have to see is nothing is ever the same. From one year to the next, next year's team will be really different than last year's. This year was a lot different than the year before, and the same could be said, you know, from the one year. Tra- There's going to be lots of transition. It's you know with uh, with the transfer portal, but if you know, the, you know the Mike Woods and Desi Sills and all, all this, what I see is that. You know, it's 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 almost like pro sports. Mm-hmm. The rosters change uh, from year to year. They change midway through the season. In, in you know, Major League Baseball, I mean, they they flush players and bring players on. And you know, if and if they do that, you know, more power to the players if they want to figure something out. Because management, in this case, Eric Musselman, is going to change. You know his roster, so you know. I guess you know it's more about I than the team and anymore, right? Well, and Mus even hit on that in a tweet that he sent yeah. out just before we got on the air here today about winning teams don't get bogged down by the forces of selfishness, uh, selfishness and individual agendas. And it kind of felt like an an- like uh, like an answer from him from his from his social media yeah, uh, was. that wasn't really directed right at Desi, but if you read, you don't have to read between the lines. No, there. I think it was. Yeah. What do you make of least? It was least directed towards that type message, whether it, cause it's going to continue. You'll continue to have, you know, players coming and going. It's not there. There's, there is nothing you can say, you know, that, Let's uh, let's just put it this way: the names on the lockers. I wouldn't do. I wouldn't screw them in. I would just <laughs> tape them up there. Yeah, 
re, re, Velcro them. Yeah, that's yeah. easier to take it off. I think that's the best way to look at. It. So, what do you make of uh, of the Mike Woods transfer? Now, there's two aspects to this. You know, why leave now? And then now that he's gone, and he's you know, people will say, well, he's just going in the transfer yeah. board, or maybe he comes. No, he's gone. Who who steps into that void? Yeah, I mean, it's there's some young guys that really have similar talent to him but they don't have the experience and how quickly they bring them along and that you know hunt jackson you know the, the, the two freshmen that, that came in the, both of those guys are really talented and probably more highly regarded than, than mike was um but you know to you the question of why did he do it to me the 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 obvious answer is because he could and we've set in place the rules that allow this to happen and if you're going to have rules that allow it to happen there's going to be a certain percentage that say yeah and the the noise around these guys are is always you know you've got and and i i'm not speaking specifically about mike woods in the you know his his uh, team or whatever you want to call family now his group Sometimes you have really, really solid folks in that, like Jalen Catalan's parents are just unbelievable. The, you know, the support network around he and his brother. You know, his brother's a good wide receiver now. He, he's going to be a guy that uh, Kendall Catalan is going to benefit from, from Mike Woods' exit. Um, he's, he looked good in the spring game and has looked good every practice as he continues to figure out the system. You know, he's a transfer guy, you know, came in and joined his brother. Um, but you you don't know the noise that's coming in, you know, to, you know, to what Mike Woods hears at night and what Desi Sills hears at night. And, you know, and, and it's just, uh, you know, I, I can remember talking about, you know, maybe changing schools or doing something, and my dad is like, no, you don't do that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't ask why. You just you don't do that. Um, and I can't remember the exact conversation, but it was really over with quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the way it is now, it, it, or at least in some sort. But there are still some that you're going to get that answer from, you know, from a dad or a mom. No, we don't do that. Just like. Sam Pittman talked about when he had a chance to go almost immediately after Brett Bielema hired him, Nick Saban called, and he was talking to his mother about that. And she says, well, we don't do that. That was the end of it. Sam didn't, you know, he didn't, that was that was the end of the conversation. Yeah, I guess she's right. Clay Henry, the publisher of Hogs Illustrated, joining us here on Halftime. Clay, we got about probably 60, 90 seconds here left before we hit this next break. To fill the void left by Mike Woods, I think you've we've heard a lot of like two names and maybe three names. You might throw John David White in the mix, but for no the sake of right now, who do you who 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 does Sam Pittman and this coaching staff turn to just to fill the void immediately? Do you turn to John David, or do you look more like a Trey Knox, the return to Devian Warren? Yeah. What What would you do? Who Who would you turn I, to? I think that you give all those guys a chance and see, and they'll decide it. You know, I I think. Uh, you know, I remember talking to to uh, Matt Hobbs about you know starting pitching candidates. You know, it's like who's going to fill the void with Isaiah Campbell and and uh, you know like what you know Blaine Knight. What you know who and he goes well the players will decide it. You don't get to decide as a coach. You give them opportunities in practice and they will decide it and it will be obvious. Uh, in you know, when I think about that outside guy, he's got to be a blocker because you're going to run those those you know those little bubble screens to 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 Traylon, and it's got to be a guy on the outside that can really man up and block. Can John David White do that? You know, I, I don't know. Trey Knox might be the guy that I would say can be that physical blocker on the outside, uh, but it it could it could be somebody that starts out that way and then. You know, four or five games in, you see somebody else emerge. I, I kind of think that's what's going to happen. It'll take a little while to figure it out. Well, it's definitely going to be one of the main stories of sure uh, of, of fall camp once we once we get to it, and it's right there in front of us. Because it seems there is no quarterback battle, to be quite honest. And I want to get your thoughts I on what you right. saw from KJ in the spring game. We'll talk some baseball with Clay Henry too after the break. Stay with us. 
on a lovely Wednesday on halftime. All right, Clay, uh, you were at the spring football game. I was. Uh, I watched the condensed version. Thank goodness for this uh, this guy on YouTube who condenses the spring game. Well, I could it watch was it in 16 condensed. minutes. It yeah. was condensed, and it was even more condensed. Right. I guess so, but uh, I, I thought KJ looked really good. He looked accurate, had a nice touch on the ball, uh, especially on that really nice pass he threw to Mike Woods for a touchdown, and we won't get to watch that again. But I thought KJ looked really nice. Yeah, he's he. I don't think there's any controversy about who the quarterback is, and you know the what I end up writing about is the importance of uh, Malik Hornsby because they're gonna they're gonna be in a, an offense that runs the quarterback, called quarterback runs, RPOs, draws. You know, he's uh, KJ is a third and one threat. You know, you you got him in the shotgun, and you got a big back beside him. You know, you hand that ball to the big back, or he, or he's gonna, you know, take off behind the tight end. The quarterback is, so he's gonna get hit. And I, I don't think that the quarterback will make it through the season unscathed. You know, he's gonna miss some time here or there, maybe a quarter, maybe a game, maybe a couple of games. So this team does need to know who the backup is and have confidence in them. And I think Hornsby's the guy from what I what I can tell. But that's the battle that you'll watch, you know, over fall camp. Is there anybody else? Does Coley make a charge? You know, John Stephen Jones. You know, could somebody else push Hornsby? But I won't tell you, that dude has some jets on him. He's 10-400. Wow. And you, you didn't really get to see much of him because as soon as he takes off, somebody will reach out and just touch him and they'll blow the whistle. Um, but... You're you're not going to bring him down with a touch <laughs> from the side. So yeah, it's a good thing it's not two hand touch in the regular season. What did you no, think of Dominique not. Johnson? Because I know you need you're talking about uh, goal line situations there. Maybe Hornsby talking about a big back. Is Johnson your big back? Yeah, I think he probably is, but he he's he still has to develop. He's but he's coming, and you see that they. What I really liked is he looks a little quicker than when I saw him in the fall at some practices, and he's dropped, you know, 10, 15 pounds. They wanted him a little, you know, he came in as a 230 guy, and, you know, everybody thinks bigger is better, and sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not. And anything that that causes you to lose some quickness or some, some elusiveness at a, the running back level is a mistake, and so they've got him at a better weight. I still think he's trying to figure out all that he can do at that weight. Um, but boy, I, I remember talking to John McDonald, and he'd look at these guys and gain weight. And of course, you know, track. He he was like, weight is so important, and it relates to speed. And there, you just there's a balance to it that you have to maintain. Yeah. Let me switch to baseball with you here. Uh, 11 SEC wins. I've only seen them win 20 SEC games in the time I've been doing this. you know. And they haven't lost a series yet. <clears throat> I mean, I would say you would never expect to win every single series you play over the course of an entire college baseball season. They've done that right now. I, I guess I'm a little nervous about this week against South Carolina just because Carolina's been really good at home. They've got extra rest for their pitching staff. Uh and they're a good team. I mean, they're top 10. Hogs have already beaten top 10 teams, what, 10 times, 11 times? So maybe I shouldn't be surprised if they go out there and win, but I'm a little nervous about this week. Yeah, you know, it's the South Carolina series has been really a lot of fun through the years. You don't play them every year, but, you know, you go back to the to the Ray Tanner days, and, you know, I know that was one that, that Dave Van Horn always circled is that because he had such respect for, for Tanner. And then they've, you know, South Carolina's kind of fallen off. You know, they've changed coaches, you know, a couple of times and, but they look like they're back and baseball's important at South Carolina. It always has been. And, you know, they, they're going in there just like you say, short of days of rest. You know, their pitching hasn't you know, really been up to what they want it to be or think it can be, still trying to figure out, you know, some of the, you know, the situations with starting rotation. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, 
you know, I think they've got good candidates, but they need Zebulon Vermillion and Connor Nolan to, to kind of reassert themselves and come back from, you know, this these little injuries and and give them something. And it could be starting pitching. And that might be all this team needs. They seem to have everything else. And, Phil, you're closer to it th- than I am, but um, – they don't need every game to be chasing from behind. Now they can do it, but every once in a while, it's going to turn out like you know, like the the Sunday game where just don't quite get there. And so, uh, save those uh, those rallies for every now and then, not every time. Yeah, I've been really. It, it's been great when I know Matt Jones wrote about um, you know what, Patrick Wicklander. And you know, he's been he found out he's he had diabetes last year and he's been battling through that and the proper treatment of it has kind of led to where it looks like he's you know, I think Paul Lett's ready to explode. Patrick Wicklander is showing that he might be ready to explode in a really positive way as well. And it also goes to show just how <laughs> how important it is, you know, you can you can perform your best when you're your healthiest, right? <laughs> That's right. And, you know, he's wearing uh, an insulin pump. You, if you look real closely, you can kind of see it in his back pocket. And so he's got that. And, you know, they're, they're watching him close. And it, it's he's still trying to figure it all out. You know, I've talked with athletes that have been in this situation before. And it can be as much mental as it is physical. You, you, you know, we, we, we've watched him from afar and didn't know this. Until really lately, you know, Matt and I both found out about it. And, um, but when, you know, there have been people critical, okay, he's lost velocity. Well, now he's got velocity back. Well, then this day he doesn't have. Well, it's all about the adjustments that, you know, that you're making, you know, chemically and how your body responds to it. So, uh, kudos to him for fighting through all this. My gosh. Yeah. You know, it's like there's some that that would be the end of it, right? You know, they just didn't come back from it. He has. Uh, let's see. And, and you're right. He, it's, I think it's a great story. Um, uh, and very, you got to persevere in moments like that because this, this is – it's serious stuff. I mean, that's, that, that's the kind of thing uh, that if it's not diagnosed at the right time, it could, yeah. it could kill you. He's, he's mentally tough. There is no doubt he's got that makeup that makes him a special player. Yeah. So – yeah, and plus he's a left-hander that throws 93. You love that, right? <laughs> a really nice curveball and a <laughs> yeah, yeah. change right now. I, I, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, 70 home runs, they need 28 more to, to tie the all-time single-season record. Um, and I, I mapped out how many games they've got left. We already had two of those canceled now. But for me, Clay, it's almost like, it's almost like the record's already down. Um, I can't imagine that they wouldn't hit at least 29 home runs for the remainder of the season. Well, they come in. They come in bunches. You know, they'll they'll you know sail along, and you think, well, nope, nope, and then all at once, boom, 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 and it's every guy. You know, it's like I, I was wondering who's going to lead this team in home runs, and it, it it could literally be one of five guys that could could end up. You know, it's a nice little competition, and I tell you what else to kind of notice, Slavin's really gets the job done with guys on base he you know there's a guy on third he may not hit a home run but he'll get it to the outfield you know he'll lift a fly or he'll and you can kind of see him start to kind of pay attention to the shift i'm gonna go the other way i'm gonna do this and um yeah oh, he's even bunted. There. he's even dropped down a couple he's no, he hasn't he has. gotten them down and that's yet, what i'm saying it's like you, you, go ahead play me that way and see what i do <laughs> that's right. and uh i you know team play you know, play pepper with that you know that building out there in right field too. <laughs> Just, he really you know, does. Yeah, he's a free yeah, swinger. Have they got a net there to protect the building? They do, there, don't they? There is a net. It doesn't extend from the very top of the building, but it it is there. I think from from it's to protect any of the windows really. So it's from any of the windows on the on the top or the bottom there. So it's not quite all the way to the top. So so 
there's going to be somebody that figures out a way to go up on the top of that building to retrieve all of Matt Goodhart's balls, right? Oh, Goodhart's hitting them over the building, Clay. No, he's, he's hitting, hitting them over. He's I hitting thought them they were the on street. top. Yeah. The ball he hit last week on, on what was that, Wednesday against, against uh, UA Pine Bluff, 450 feet, easy. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of jokingly sent you a text that, hey, it just went through the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, right through the tunnel, I remember. All right, Clay, that's it. We appreciate All you, right. man. Thanks so much. Yep, yep. Thanks, Safe Clay. travels. Hope yep. they're biting for you today. I know you're going fishing. It won't matter. It's pretty day. Good. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. All right, that's Clay Henry. All right, we'll come back after the break. We get the uh, announcement of the weekend. Uh, we got Change My Mind, Bill King, 877-377-6963. And we're taking a trip back because today is National Kindergarten Day. And it's time for your mid-afternoon nap, kids. Stay with us.